it's BJ. Welcome to Seed Starting Boot Camp. We're going to have fun and you're going to learn a lot. One thing I love about gardeners is that they are eternally optimistic and I often hear, well, there's always next year. Together, I wanna to help you have the highest level of seed starting success, and I'm gonna show you some tips that the pro use with adaptations for the homeowner. So there's um, four environmental factors that are important to consider for really successful seed germination. And those four things are temperature, media, moisture, and light. So I'm going to be talking about those as we go through all the materials and the demonstration on how to get set up. Um, so as far as temperature goes, every seed variety has its optimal germination temperature. That's usually indicated on the back of the seed pack or readily available online um, and in extension pamphlets. Uh, so most seeds will germinate very well in a range of between 70 and 75 degrees. That's a very good average for most seeds. Um, some will germinate in cooler temperatures like lettuce, spinach, kale, and your cool crops. Uh, others require higher temperatures to really germinate in a timely manner, um, more like 80 degrees, 85 degrees, and those are things like peppers and eggplant. So unless your ambient temperature is already at those ideal optimal temperatures, you might want to consider using a seed mat. Um, these are heat mats um, that run between 70 and 80 degrees. Um, you plug them into the wall. Um, some of them come with thermostats, um, which I would recommend if you really want to dial in or you're growing things that are um, on the high temperature end, like the peppers, that you really want to make sure are staying at least 80 degrees. Um, these come in very, very handy and can really reduce the time it takes for your seeds to germinate. Um, the next thing to consider is what type of media you're going to use. You definitely want to use clean, fresh, and sterile media. And they actually do make seedling mixtures that are specific for seed starting. And what makes them different is that it usually has a much finer texture, so it's easier for the seedling to emerge throughout through the soil. Heavier soils tend to compact and make it harder for the seed to get through. Um, a lot of them have a little bit of a starter um, fertilizer in them, although seedlings don't need much, if any, fertilizer. And a lot of them have a little bit of a wetting agent in it, so they stay evenly moist, which is super important. Uh, for in the seedling stage, in the seed ger and germination stage. So, uh, and they also have good water holding capacities to help keep it um, evenly moist and also um, good air space. And that oxygen is crucial for seedlings to get what they need to thrive. So uh, look in your local garden centers and if you can't find it there and you'll find it online quite easily is a seed um, starter mix specifically for that. If you can't find it anywhere, um, you still can use a professional potting mix, which will work just fine. Uh, but anything you can do to uh, speed up the process of germination is going to help you in the long run. I've poured a little bit of that seed starting mix uh, in a pan here because what you want to do is start, uh, you want you want to start with damp media. Um, but you absolutely don't want it saturated, okay? So what I recommend, and like I said, a lot of times the seed starting mix has a um, wetting agent in it um, to keep it evenly moist. So if you open the bag and you find that's the case, great, you're good to go. If it seems a little on the drier side because they do tend to be finer particles, um, pour some in a little bucket, however much you think you're gonna be using, and I would pour, put a little bit of water at a time over it. And you can either mix it up with a trowel or use your hands. I kind of like to use my hands. Um, and just work it so that it's uniform throughout your soil uh, until it's damp, but definitely not saturated. You absolutely don't want to um, be able to squeeze any water out of it, but you want to be able to feel that it's um, uh, moist throughout the throughout. Uh, the soil that you poured in here. It's really crucial that throughout the germination process that you keep your soil evenly damp because if the soil dries out at any point during that process, germination really seizes halt and you are going to have a much lower germination rate, if any at all. In addition to that, you can't keep it saturated either because if you keep wet soil, then you lose all of the necessary oxygen that seeds need to germinate. And it also provides a really perfect environment for pathogens and diseases to invade your setup. 
All seeds, um, seeds neither need lightness or darkness to germinate. That's usually indicated on the back of the seed packet. Um, and they communicate that by saying plant at a depth of a quarter inch. Um, if so, the deeper that they are buried, the, the darkness, the more darkness that they need. But it's also a function of the seed size. So a very tiny seed like basil is usually needs light, meaning it's a very much sown on the surface um, with maybe a little bit of soil on top. But bigger, the bigger the seed, the deeper the planting. So a good rough rule is to plant the seed at twice the depth of the diameter of the seed. Um, so in other words, deeper, um, bigger seeds get planted deeper. Um, once that seed germinates and is showing above the soil, that's when the supplemental lighting becomes very important. And as homeowners, we have, and uh, even commercial growers, we've really only, from a seed standpoint, um, largely been using fluorescent lights and because that's really all we had available to us and they they fit the bill they they for seed germination in that stage um, they will put out the minimum required to get that job done uh, now the world is moving more towards leds because there's no bulbs to change they're far more efficient um, they're becoming very affordable and they work a lot better and they work a lot longer throughout more of the um, stages of a plant's life. So for example, and I'm not going to get too deep in all the science of it, um, but there is a measurement called the PAR value and PAR stands for photosynthetic active radiation. Those are the wavelengths that plants use to really um, become uh, photosynthetic powerhouses. So that's what they use to um, really thrive and become strong, sturdy, healthy green plants. So I'm going to just do a really quick demonstration what separates a typical fluorescent light from a happy leaf light. There are other LED lights that are also just not putting out the wavelengths that you want to see. Um, so this is a very simple PAR meter and I'm going to measure the PAR value of this fluorescent light, which was purchased at a Home Depot specifically for growing um, and advertised as a seed starting light. Um, so I'm gonna turn it on without blinding you. Um, and I'm gonna put the sensor under there and turn it on. So again, we um, for minimally for PAR value for just seed starting, so just to the seedling stage, you want a minimum of 80 really um, 75 to 100 will do the trick I would say 100 to 150 is far better um, but right now at about a foot above the plants uh, we're getting 49 um, even if I get really 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 close to the um, plants which you typically don't want to do with fluorescence because it can burn um, tender seedlings um, I'm only getting 77, and that's pretty much right on the PAR meter here. So now we're going to, let me plug in our happy leaf light. This is our 17 inch Procyon 2.0, um, and it's a really great all around light. Um, they also come in 33 inch lights, which I have set up here, which is where I'm going to actually put my seed flat. Um, but let's do the same experiment here. So I'm gonna turn it on and Let's get it about a foot over. I'm getting a value of 335. If I put it right on it, which is also unnecessary even with a non-burning LED light, um, I'm getting 900 and actually 1,030 now. Um, and that's about three to four inches off. Um, and those values are important because while a hundred, um, a value of a hundred will germinate plants. The problem comes once they come up and now they're seedlings. If you continue to grow under a fluorescent light or you have been growing under fluorescent light, you will notice they start to get a little bit leggy. You've got the light right on them. Usually legginess is they're looking for light, but they're looking for the right spectrum light. Um, so something is usually amiss um, with the quality of the light. So when you're growing under full spectrum lights that get a par value that high, they don't have to look anywhere, so they stay short and stocky, healthy and sturdy and green. And another important part about those, the differences in those two par values is uh, at the seedling stage, you know, once you have a plant, um, plants really prefer, anything grown vegetatively really prefers values between two and 400. 
Fluorescents just can't do that. So they can get seeds started. They can do a decent job of growing um, low light requiring plants. Um, but when you're growing foliage plants that you want to be really nice and healthy and strong, they really prefer power values of two to 400. And as you can see, um, Happy Leaf easily gets you there. Um, so that's something to look for as far as light quality. Um, and then even beyond seed starting, so beyond vegetative growth, if you are growing something that you want to fruit or flower, say you are growing tomatoes indoors all year long and you're going to keep these plants indoors, you can still continue to use the happy leaf light because flowering plants require a value of 400 and more. So um, this one has a range that can accommodate all of those um, par values. Whatever your choice is and whatever light you're growing under, I would definitely recommend that you plug it into a timer. Um, we have these timers that you can set for certain times of day to come on and off. That way you don't really have to worry about when to plug them in and plug them out and you're not wasting energy running them 24 hours a day. So now that we've discussed the four major environmental considerations to um, think about, um, we get to move into the process of setting this up. Uh, and the first thing we're going to do is choose our seeds, which is my favorite part of starting seeds at home, is you get to grow exactly the varieties that you want. It's fun and it's inexpensive, which are two of my favorite adjectives in the entire world. So I love to get seeds from several places, but our very favorites are Fruition up in New York. They just have wonderful varieties. You get really high percentage um, in your germination rates. Um, and they have great tutorials on how to grow all of them. Uh, we also like Jung seeds just for the variety. They have a lot of compact vegetable plants for uh, growing year round, which we like to do here at Happy Leaf. And another favorite is uh, Seed Savers Exchange in Iowa. And I really like them because they specialize in air, um, preserving heirloom varieties. And they have just really unique stuff that you can't find in a lot of other places. A lot of people like myself um, have seeds that they have collected and still have from last year and perhaps even the year before or seeds that people have given us. Um, so I'm going to show you a really quick uh, seed viability test. Um, if you want to find out if your seed's any good, especially if you've been hanging on to it for a little while. So I'm going to use um, a packet here. Uh, and what you want to do is put them in a little bit of water. It's a super simple test to figure out whether um, your seed is still good or not. Um, so you put some in water and you just let it sit for 10 or 15 minutes. And the seeds that are still viable tend to sink and uh, the seeds that are no longer um, viable or able to germinate will main, um, continue to float. All seed packets, I should say most seed packets, I'm sure there are some not as complete, but provide you with a lot of really great information, okay? Things you might find on here is maybe a little bit of history or something about the plant. Um, you will find out um, how many days to germination, so that's how many days I can expect to wait before I see it emerging from the soil. Um, things like lettuce and kale may take four to five days. Things like peppers and eggplant may take up to two weeks. So, um, and in some cases longer if you don't have your temperature high enough. So, um, another piece of good information, sometimes they will tell you the depth to plant it at. So maybe an eighth of an inch or just barely cover the seed. Um, some of them will tell you um, when to plant it. So. If you want to harvest this in June, plant it in this month. Um, so Burpee does that, um, which is kind of unique to them. Um, but the seed packs really have a lot of information. So definitely read over those. Um, other things to consider as far as success in germination. Um, and I'm going to use this morning glory as an example. And it tells you this on the seed packet. And if it really does help, it probably will tell you this. But some seeds need a little bit help to germinate, OK? Uh, if you think about the equivalent in nature. Um, so one is called uh, stratification and cold stratification. And that is mainly if you're um, trying to germinate perennial seeds, they need a cold treatment um, to break dormancy before they will germinate. Um, again, packets will usually tell you that if that's the case. And um, if you store them where I store them, which is in my refrigerator, that 40 degrees, 42 degrees is enough of a cold treatment over the winter to break that dormancy. So that's usually not an issue for most people who store their seeds properly. Um, and the other thing is scarification. And commercially, people do this with acid. Um, 
Um, and that's used on seeds that have very hard seed coats, um, such as Morning Glory. And I always like to start these inside um, ahead of the game. And so for uh, scarification, you could do a number of different methods. So, um, so for Morning Glories, the seeds are just super, the seed coats are super hard. Um, and the and a really great treatment that works on these is just soaking them. And again, if soaking is required, that usually says so on the seed packet. Um, and it does in this case, soak seeds for 24 hours first. What that does is soften up that hard seed coat and make it easier for the seed to germinate. Okay, so we're ready to get to the process of sowing our seeds. And I just wanna show you a few tools. Um, seed starting does not need to be complicated. Um, there are definitely, um, people will try to sell you the Cadillac of seed starting, but the truth is you can do it in Tupperware containers, you can do it in anything that has drainage. Um, so even a to-go, this is not a good, but not a to-go container, <laughs> but um, you know, you could even use to-go containers and reuse them. Um, they make really great uh, germination domes. Um, but there are a variety of different ways to do it and they'll try and sell you everything, but I'll, uh, go through a few that I think work pretty good. I don't typically use these, but they are common in the store and these are really hard, um, peat moss pellets and you soak them in water, um, overnight, a good 24 hours and they hydrate and become puffy. And then you just put your seed right in the top of each one of those. And they usually come in a already made tray. Um, so that can be really easy. You fill the tray up with water, you let it imbibe the water, you stick your little seed in there and you're good to go. So that's a pretty easy no-brainer one. Um, this is kind of the Cadillac, I do like it, but it is the Cadillac kind of of um, home germination kits. Um, so this one has, it has a styrofoam insert um, where you would put, um, and then a tray, so that holds your water. And then it actually has these little spongy oasis um, cubes that you soak in water before you use. And I like them because it kind of takes the guesswork of how, to, how wet or how dry to keep your soil. So you would soak these little cubes um, and stick them in the holes. Um, and then remember when we talked about evenly moist, that's where I, why germination kits are typically sold with a, a lid because it's humidity control and it keeps the moisture in there and it keeps that helps you really um, a lot keep the soil evenly moist. This one even has vents because you'll get condensation on it. Um, but this helps keep the humidity in, which helps keep your soil levels um, moist, and it also helps retain heat. Uh, if you f get a system that has a dome lid, make sure as soon as they germinate, I usually say when about 70% of my stuff is germinated, get that off of there because then you're gonna start promoting diseases. Um, that needs to come off as soon as they germinate. Um, so this is a really nice system. The one we're going to use for our, um, our sewing today is just a simple one sold by Jiffy. Um, and it's called a Jiffy Seed Germination Kit. And I like it. I mean, there's nothing high quality about the individual materials, but it's got everything you need. Um, so it's got a tray that, um, that doesn't drain, that holds water. Um, it's got inserts that um, drain, which is essential. Whatever you're using must drain. Um, and then this kit actually even came with little labels, which is important because you won't remember what you put in your little cells. And it even comes with a super th packet of Super Thrive fertilizer um, specific for seedlings because seedlings um, require very, very low doses of fertilizer. So the last thing I wanna show you is what's um, typically called a plug tray. These are more commonly used in commercial production um, and they come in many, many sizes. Uh, and if you go to a lot of garden centers or you have something local, um, a greenhouse locally, a lot of time, and especially in the spring, they'll have a lot of these that they may just give you or sell you very inexpensively. As long as you have a tray that doesn't drain that you can put it in, these make really great vehicles for seed germination. Okay, so all that talking and this process actually only takes less than a minute. So what we're gonna do is use our tray of choice um, and we're gonna fill it up with our germination mix. And this is already wet and um, damp for me. So I'm gonna have to use very little spray to get the seed in there. 
All right. So I've got my tray filled up. I'm only going to do two for now. Peppers take a long time to germinate. So those are the two I'm starting first. Um, and I'll come back in in a couple of weeks and do tomatoes. And then I'll add things that take a little bit less time. Um, but for today, I'm going to start with peppers. I'm going to do poblanos first because they're my favorite. Um, and sometimes it depends on how many seeds I have. If I have an abundance of seed, especially peppers because they don't last very long, even in um, really good storage um, conditions, uh, you usually need to sow pepper seed pretty early. They don't stay fresh very long. So I like to do um, two per cell. So I'm just gonna pick up, and pepper seeds are big enough to handle um, that I don't need any special tools for it. So I'm gonna put two per um, what I'm calling a cell is each one of these has six. Um, so there's 12 cells here total. So like this one here on the end, it has six different places for seeds. Each one of those is referred to as a cell. Um, so I'm putting two seeds per cell. And that way if one doesn't germinate, I always have a backup and I can always either um, divide them and have two plants that I can transplant or remove one. Um, so look at there. I got exactly eight seeds out of there. That was pure luck. Um, and then according to the seed packet, my seed needs to be buried a quarter inch deep. Um, so I just gently want to press it in there, which serves two purposes. Okay. So I'm gently pressing. You don't want compact soil in any way. Um, but I'm pressing not only to get it at the depth that is recommended, but it also puts it in very good contact with the soil. And um, they even have large commercial machines where um, it's kind of a very light tamper, which just um, compresses the soil just enough to put the seed in good contact with soil. So in order to bury them, I'm gonna need to add a little bit more soil. Again, I'm not pushing very hard at all. At no point do you really wanna push down on the soil. Um, you might wanna give it a little pat or a shake, but you don't wanna bang it down and. Um, in any other way, compact the soil. Okay, so I have my six pepper seeds of poblano already ready to go. And um, the next one I'm gonna do is a bell pepper. I will tell you that for some reason, um, hot peppers take a little bit longer to germinate and the germination rates tend to be all over the place. There's, I have a packet here, I think it's one of these. Eight to 25 days to expect. Well, that's a long window and it's almost never eight days. Um, it's more like two weeks is a pretty good thing. But I will also say that you can expect to shave off from start to finish, from the time you're today you're sowing to the time you plant in your garden, you can expect to really shave a full week off using a happy leaf light because it's so high quality and you'll find the plants are growing bigger, stronger, quicker. Um, so you have a bigger plant to work with. So I have found I actually have to move back those recommended dates by at least a week, if not two. So now our seeds are properly sown into their containers. Um, and we do, even though we uh, wet the soil a little bit before we started, um, that's so we don't have to saturate and compact the soil now. So now to get that good, compact, uh, that good contact with the soil, um, we're gonna, Spray bottle them in, and this is really, unless you have a dome, which also reduces a lot of labor, you're gonna wanna have a good spray bottle when it comes to seedlings, because until they come up and you can actually water the soil, this is the best way to not saturate the soil. So I'm gonna put my tray on my already started heating mat and under my Happy Leaf Light. And because these are peppers, um, the package says up to 25 days, once we, uh, get them germinated. We'll see how the seedlings are doing. So make sure that you stay tuned for part two and what to do once all of your seeds come up. We'll talk about post germination care. Okay, so that wraps it up for today and how to get off to a really great start with seed germination. And if you could please like and subscribe to our YouTube page, you will find not only part two, which will deal with post germination care, and, but you'll also find all of our uh, YouTube videos that have lots of visual information on the many ways that you can use Happy Leaf Light successfully. Happy growing!